Hi everyone, this is Eugene Lishio, and today I'd like to show you a little bit about our official release of Cloud Simax today, and I'm quite excited about it. Um, I think it's a great little plugin for bringing in point clouds into 3ds Max, and it's actually quite simple to use. So uh, I want to start off by showing you a point cloud here that is uh, a relatively decent size. Size it's about 88 million points, and the point cloud size is really dependent on your hardware. So I have right now, I'm actually using a laptop, it's an i7 chip, I have 8 gigabytes of RAM and I have an NVIDIA video card that's uh, 1.5 gigabytes of RAM. So um, bringing in the 88 million points is actually not too bad. If you have a faster machine uh, with uh, you know more RAM and stuff, it should actually load better and perform better than what we have on screen here. Now uh, I'll walk you through the process of just loading up from scratch. So. Um, in terms of what we can load up, we have ASCII, text file, PTS, PTCB, and so there's a, a number of options there. Now, what I've done is I have got this uh, crushed car here that I'm going to load up, and uh, um, originally this was, I believe, a text file or a PTS file. I'm not exactly sure right now, but what we've done is we've given you an option to resave these out as an optimized file under the uh, extension of C2M. So uh, if you do that, you'll find that the performance is actually a little bit better. Uh, it builds normals in the file and just uh, optimizes the whole thing. So uh, you can see here that I've got the file loaded. It's a smaller file. It's 13.24 million. And uh, moving down the list here, we've got this toggle viewport text. So in another video, I was showing that you can uh, render from the viewport. And it's actually quite uh, quite quite uh, fast to do that and it looks really good so uh, if we hit the toggle button the text up here will disappear once you refresh the screen so I'm just gonna hit the alt W key just to go to the quad view and back to the single view and you'll see that the text is gone now the menus are actually still there so if I click over in these areas you see I still have access to the menus but just the text is not showing so when you're going to render this out it shouldn't be a problem you'll have a nice clean viewport now if I do want that back I can just click and it comes back so you need to refresh when you shut it off often um, but normally you don't have to refresh when you're turning it back on okay so further down the list here uh, you'll see in the rendering section there are a number of uh, settings here there's actually four of them with respect to how the point cloud is going to appear so uh, this I'm not going to go through each one of these but basically uh, it's documented in our reference document uh, but you can do things like if I take the global details and I turn them down to something really small you will see that you know we get less and less points to show up um, also your you know things like the maximum point size if I turn this up to like five you'll see that the points increase in size and so there, there's some like level of detail features built in here but if you go through the reference document you'll you'll see them here now the uh, skip each nth point uh, this here is useful when you have very large point clouds and you really don't need all the points in there. So if we had a, a point cloud that was, you know, half a billion points and we just wanted to work with a hundred million points, we could just put, you know, a number of five and then load the file. Now, an important point here is that this will only work when you're either first loading files of PTS, ASCII, or text. Once you've converted a file to C2M format, you can't actually use this feature anymore. You'd have to go back, load the file uh, at the dense or at the uh, the point density you wanted, and then save it back out as C2M. But if you're using PTS or uh, a, a file that hasn't been converted, uh, you can load it up this way. Now, if you load it up and you want to change it, you want a, a lighter uh, or less points, you can set this number to a new, a new number, but then you'd have to hit reload, and that's really basically how that works. Now, under the about you know we have some information here about you know our website online documentation and, and such so um, you know that's standard in a lot of different software so two features that I think I'd like to show you uh, the first one under the helpers menu if you go down to the bottom of cloud Simex, we have a, a limit box and the limit box is useful as a lot of people know just for clipping and uh, you know cutting off different parts of the point cloud that we may not want visible at any one time so you can scale this and you can see it's it's very very fluid. The the the, the limit box works really really well. Um, a lot of different uh, for all you know all axes. Now the limit box can also be animated. So if you wanted to do something where um, you know uh, you want to have some kind of effect like a building building up from the bottom, you could do that. You know you could start start from the bottom and then have it slowly come up and then start showing the points as it builds. So kind of a neat little uh, neat little feature. I'm going to delete that. 
The other option that I think that is quite useful is under the snaps menu here. Uh, actually, if I right click it, you'll see that we have an option for cloud stamac. So it will now snap to points on the point cloud. I found that this works best when the other features are not uh, checked. So if you have a mix of meshes and point clouds, you probably and they're sort of uh, laying over top of each other, you're going to want to shut off everything else except for the cloud stamac so it doesn't snap unnecessarily to other things. And here, you know, for example, if I wanted to create a line on the ground plane, you know, I could just sort of click away here. I don't know, something like that. And if I lift that up, actually I'm going to shut off the toggles, lift that up, and you'll see that the line was created on a flat surface as such. So that's a useful feature for, uh, you know, modeling and, and that sort of thing. So uh, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Uh, it's it's uh, relatively easy to use. Uh, if you can, go to the Clouds to Max uh, website, uh, send us your uh, screenshots, post on the laser scanning forum. We'd love to see the kind of work that you're doing with this. Thank you very much.